We begin, though, with big breaking headline right now. Shares of Johnson & Johnson, they are higher in the after hours after an Oklahoma judge ordered the company to pay $572 million for its role in the national opioid crisis. However, that number, $572 million, far less than some expected. Meg Terrell is live outside of the courthouse in Norman, Oklahoma, where that decision was handed down less than one hour ago. Meg. Hey, Brian. Well, uh, it may not sound like a positive headline, but J&J stock is certainly not reacting that way. The judge here in Oklahoma did find Johnson & Johnson accountable for creating the state's opioid epidemic, saying it created what they call a public nuisance. But they were ordered to pay $572 million. Now, the state had asked for $17 billion over 30 years. Now, that $572 million accounts for one year of what they call an abatement plan to try to fix the opioid crisis here in the state. They're saying here in the 42-page decision that the state didn't provide sufficient evidence of the amount of time and costs necessary beyond year one to abate the opioid crisis. And that's why you're seeing 572 versus the 17 billion that the state asked for. Wall Street was looking for one to two billion dollars. So that's why you're seeing these stocks move so much. Not just Johnson & Johnson, but other drug makers involved in other cases that are gonna start to play out this fall, like Teva, Malincrot, Endo. Uh, drug distributors uh, moving a little bit as well. Amerisource Bergen, McKesson, Cardinal Health. So there's a lot on the line here. We just heard from the state attorney general, uh, Mike Hunter, here uh, calling out Johnson & Johnson CEO directly. Take a listen to what he said. Johnson & Johnson is a member of the Business Roundtable. And I'm asking the CEO of Johnson & Johnson, Alex Gorski, to put his money where his mouth is and get out his checkbook. Now, we are hearing back from Johnson & Johnson, too, which says it will appeal, saying that Janssen did not cause the opioid crisis in Oklahoma, and neither the facts nor the law support this outcome. Uh, saying in a more full statement just coming out now that they are asking for the payment of $572 million to be stayed through their appeal. That process, they think, is going to take uh, into the year 2021. Now, they said that this outcome shouldn't have any impact on the thousands of other cases that are pending around the country. Uh, there are more than 2,000 consolidated in federal court in Ohio that are set to start this fall. Uh, and they say that all options are on the table for that, including a potential settlement. And that would mark a difference uh, in the way they handled this case, uh, where they said in their opening statement, when you're right, you're fight. They fought this one, but there's a lot more on the table, Brian, coming up. All right, Meg Terrell outside the courthouse in Norman, Oklahoma. Meg, thank you very much. Guys, let's trade this. Tim Seymour, your reaction. Brian, welcome. Uh, look, I, I think for J&J, you have two litigation overhangs. Obviously, Talc has won. This is the other one. This is a victory. Uh, I'm sorry. For, for a company unlike Mallinckrodt, unlike Endo, uh, this is a company that has plenty of resources to go after that. More importantly, if you get to the J&J story, again, it's a diversified story. There's, there's medical devices. There's consumer products. In addition to Forma, this is a company that's trading at a massive discount to its peers on a sum of the parts basis. And yet, while that never really is totally a linear exercise, this is an interesting moment for the company. Yeah, I think what Tim said is really important here. This is against J&J. The other cases, there's some coming up in Ohio next month. That is against multiple different defendants, and these defendants don't have the same type of resources or, or diversification that J&J &J has. So as a trader, I would not take this move in J&J &J to mean anything for these other companies. The only thing it probably means is Wall Street was expecting like around a billion dollars. Yeah. This is 572. So maybe if there is a, a judgment, it's less than Yeah, we but it was, it was a $17 billion ask. Right, I mean, exactly. let's, let's, that's, that's a big discount. This is 96% yeah. less than sort of the peak of what it could be. But let's be clear. I mean, nobody around this table is an attorney. We've got no. other things. Do you worry, Mark, that, yes, this may have gone favorably for J&J &J and its shareholders, but you think about big tobacco, $268 billion national settlement that took decades to get to. Yeah. Is there too much risk to own J&J? &J? I don't think so at all. I mean, this thing's dirt cheap. I mean, it's trading, trading like 14 times uh, forward earnings right now. Huge valuation discount to where it normally trades. Uh, as Tim mentioned, it's got a great diversified revenue base from medical devices to pharma to consumer. Uh, I love the stock. I think this was a great win for them so far. I mean, they're sued for $17 billion. They get ordered to pay half a billion. Not a bad deal for them right now. Yeah, but this is a stock, let's be clear, Mark, that forget about talc, forget about opioids, hasn't moved yeah, correct. In two and a it's half traded, years, the stock horribly. is at the same price as May of 2017. Correct. And, well, I, 
I, I say this though, Brian. It, you know, certainly it went from December 2015. It went from about an $85 stock up to $145 stock before it then ran into the talc issues. So, um, to me, in a market where you have uncertainty around growth, in a market where you have certainly people reaching for more defensive plays, this to me is a little bit more of an avenue into Johnson and Johnson. I, I hear you, uh, except for that, you know, relative to its peers, I still like the valuation, and this is where the market is rewarding companies right now in that. You know, kind of overall risk description growth. The problem out. is, if you look at how it traded, though, $130 is basically the breakdown level from the other day, right? So you're bouncing right up against what is now resistance. It was support in a stock that's gone sideways. Now, it's gone sideways in a big range, but I just think there's better places to be. Plus, you have the overhang of multiple different suits. So, yeah, was this good today? If you're in it and you got it right, sell it and pat yourself on the back. Yeah, I mean, I think this could be a catalyst to propel the stock a little bit higher. Like I said, Great, great valuation at these levels. Love the stock. Nice defensive play. Defensive plays have been working, right? I mean, healthcare not so much, yeah. but defensive plays overall have been working. I think defensive plays continue to work until we get a trade deal at some point, which who knows if that's going to happen. But let's note, though, that half the after-hours pop has already deflated mm -hmm. out of the stock. It was up 4% 20 minutes ago. J&J &J now up less than 2%.